Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. Are your Power BI reports taking forever to refresh? Do you dread kicking that refresh button knowing that it will take hours to process millions of rows? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem with incremental refresh, a powerful feature in Power BI that lets you refresh only the data that has changed instead of reloading everything from scratch. Whether you're working with large data sets or just want to improve performance and reduce load on your data source, this technique is a game changer. Stick around as I walk you through what incremental refresh is, why it matters and how you can set it up in just a few steps. Let's dive in. First of all, let me explain to you what incremental refresh is. I have a data set here which has sales data from 2021 all the way up till 2025. 2025 is partial, I only have January and February data. And let us say you have set this up without incremental refresh and every time you hit the refresh button, it is going to load entire data set all the way from 2021 till 2025. Let us say that you have added March, April, May, June months data here into the year 2025 and when you hit the refresh button, it's going to refresh 2021 onwards all the way up till 2025. And that is not something that we want because it is going to take up a lot of your resources, a lot of your time, etc. And whenever a new data is added to our database, let us say that from March onwards until June, if the data is added in the year 2025, we only want Power BI to detect those rows or the new data that has been added and refresh only that data and not the historical data. You can choose which months or years that you want to refresh and just refresh that part of the data. So let us see how we can do this. If you set up incremental refresh, it's going to save a lot of time and efforts. Let us see how we can set this up in Power BI. I'm now here in Power BI. I have about 635,000 rows. And when I hit the refresh button here, you will see that the amount of time that this is taking to load the data, it's about 48 MB file with 635,000 rows. It did take quite, a, quite some time to load the data. Now let us see how we can set the incremental refresh and how this is going to affect the performance of our Power BI report. Now let's head over into the Power Query editor as a first step. Let's create a couple of parameters. I'm going to click on parameters here, select new parameter. And in the, in the parameter name, I'm going to call this as range start. Make sure that you type in the exact same name here. From the drop down, type here, select date time. And in the current value, enter the minimum value that you have in your data. For example, I'm going to type in 1, 1, 1, 1, 20, 20. In my database, I have data all the way back from 2020, so I'm going to enter 1, 1, 20, 20. And then I will click on new again and type in range end. From the drop down here, select date time. And in the current value, I'm just going to type in 1, 6, 20, 25. And then click on OK. This can be any date, it does not really matter. And then click on OK. Now let's go back into the orders table. In your orders table, you have your date field. Make sure that your date field is date time. If it is only date, you will not be able to see. When I, when I go to the date filters here and select custom filter, you will not be able to select the parameter that we just created. So make sure that your date field is date time. The, the data type needs to match. And now when I go back into this drop down and choose custom filter, I now have an option to select the parameter. So I'm going to, from this drop down, I'm going to select is after or equals to parameter that we just created, range start and is before the parameter again. And this time it's going to be range end and then click on OK. We now have the, we now have the filter applied. I'm going to click on close and apply. All right, now the next step here is going to set up the incremental refresh. So I'm going to click on these three ellipses here in my orders table and select incremental refresh. From the drop down here, you'll be able to choose the table here. I'm going to again select the orders table and toggle this button on which says incremental refresh this table. And let's go through the different options that we have here. The first option that we have here is to archive data starting. We'll have to enter the value here. Let's enter five and for the next drop down here, you'll be able to choose either days, months, quarters and years. Let me select years here to help you understand what is happening. And the next option here is incremental refresh data starting. I'm going to enter one here and choose year. When I do that, you'll see that my data is getting imported all the way from 1st of January 2020 to 12 31 2024. And the incremental data is happening 
from 1st of Jan 2025 all the way up till 12th December 2025. Which means that the data here for the last five years all the way till 2024 is not going to get refreshed. It's just going to get archived and sit there. And the incremental refresh data is going to affect only the data for the last one year, which is 1st of Jan 2025 all the way up till 31st of December 2025. Now, if you want to change this, let us say that you just want to refresh last one month's data. You can simply select from this drop down month and you will see that only the June month data is getting refreshed. Likewise, if you want last one quarter data or two quarters data, you can select right from here. For this example, I'm going to select one year. And then the next option here is the get the latest data in real time with direct query. Now, when you check this box, you will get the data in real time and using direct query, but make sure that you need to have premium license for this. And the next option here is only refresh complete year. When you check this box, only when the entire year is complete, it's going to refresh. For example, if I select day here, you will see that 6.9 to 6.9 is getting refreshed. It's not considering 6.10 because I have checked this box. If I uncheck this box, it says 6.10 to 6.10. Let me go back and select here. And the next option here is detect data changes. When you check this box, what happens is that it will only refresh data in the last one year if the maximum value of this daytime column changes. I can select if I have multiple daytime columns here, they will appear here. I only have one field here, order date. I'm going to choose that. Let us say as an example, I have data loaded till 1st of June 2025. If you have set up this to refresh every day, the next day it will attempt to incremental refresh the data. But since the, there is no new data available, the incremental refresh also is not going to happen when you check this box. But whenever there's a new data added, let us say now I have data all the way added till 10th of June and it will detect that change and complete the incremental refresh. For now, I'm just going to uncheck this. And the last option here is to review and apply. It's going to archive last five years of data and incrementally refresh one year of data. This looks good to me. I'm going to hit the apply button now. Now let's publish this report to our service and test this out. I'm going to publish this into my tutorials workspace. I'm now here in Power BI service and let us try to refresh this particular data model and see how much time it takes to refresh. It has started to refresh now. Let me fast forward this video. And it has taken roughly about one minute, three seconds to refresh the entire data set. Now in my data set, I'm going to add in some new data here. Let's add in a couple of months of data. Maybe from March, April, May, and June, the last four months of data, I'm going to simply copy this, come back into my orders tab and paste this below right here and save this particular file. Let me close this. And we have the incremental refresh setup now. Let's go back into our Power BI service and let us try to refresh the data. I have about 635,420 rows. Let's go back here and refresh this particular model and see how much time it takes to refresh this data set now. Let me fast forward this video. Now it only took about 27, 28 seconds to refresh the data. Let's come back into our Power BI report and refresh this and see if it has, if the data has changed. 635,000.95. We've now added all the new rows into our data set in just under 30 seconds. We've shaved almost 50% of our refresh time. Also remember that we've refreshed the entire 2025 year and if you set up smaller time frames, let us say that if you just set up last one month or last two months of data, you might be able to shave down some more time as well. Now, one of the major drawbacks of using incremental refresh that you should know is that you, once you create incremental refresh and publish the report, you will not be able to download that particular file. So before you create incremental refresh and publish, make sure to create a copy of this. When I click on these ellipses here and select download this file, it will throw me an error saying that this file can't be downloaded yet. You can't download this file because the data set was altered through incremental refresh. One of the limitations that you should know before using incremental refresh. And that's how you supercharge your Power BI reports with incremental refresh. No more long refresh times, no more straining your data source. Just fast, efficient, and smart updates. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more Power BI tips and tricks, and drop a comment below if you have any questions or want me to cover another topic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.